Do you introduce Hi there, Ben. Sir? Hi there, Ben. How's Hi. it going? Oh, top form, yeah. sir. How are you? Yeah, yeah, really good. Thank you uh, for having me on here. And uh, thanks to Fabian for organising this. I think, think Fabian's on mute, but yeah. Is so good? tell us about French Connections, Richard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, welcome all to the uh, to, to, to the webinar and thanks uh, for joining in. It's, it's overwhelming to have so many people on here. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, a bit like yourself, Ben, uh, I grew up in France. So I was born uh, in France, uh, grew up there, um, was educated there. I'm saying this because I don't sound French, right? So, but um, I, I, if I do turn into French, you can't, it's the same thing the other way around. Um, I guess when I was about 18, 19 years old, I realized there was a real need for assistance with um, uh, English speakers in France. Um, I was doing that whilst I was studying. It's through lack of ambition, I'm sure, that I uh, didn't launch my business back then. Um, but after having traveled the world, worked for many US companies um, and UK companies and living in both those countries and coming back to France, I just thought, yeah, this is the right time for this business. And about five years ago, uh, Fabien and I uh, crossed paths and the, the rest is history. Today, we are the uh, largest relocation business in France. Uh, we have offices in France, UK, and now US. So hi to Delphine that must be watching from the US <laughs> today. Um, uh, early morning for her. Um, and so, yeah, uh, absolutely. We, we, I guess the best way to describe us, because I, I, I think the term hand-holding is often sort of floated around. I don't think we're really hand-holders. Um, I think other people do hand-holding very well and individually, but we really provide a solution, answers in a professional and reliable manner. Um, and we've created, a, I think, a, a very good platform of technology linking barristers that work for us full time uh, and paralegals uh, that we have that can do those tasks that are more uh, uh, tedious, shall we say, and, and, and more towards the legal side of things. And then, you know, people like Fabio and I being in business, we just bring the best people that we know working together to provide solutions for people that live or are moving to France. And these days we help probably five families or, or, or individuals relocate per week. So that's the kind of size of, uh, that we, we, we're coping with these days. And a majority of our clients are probably US, New Zealand, Australia, Canadian based. Uh, of course, an awful lot of uh, our, our, our clients are also from the UK, but I think moving from even further afield, it makes it even more relevant to get this right. And to pinch one of Fabian's terms, you know, it's finding companies that have actually got these these battle tested policies, these these um, like Fab Insurance, of course. And and Fab and I work, of course, hand in hand because one goes with the other. You need uh, if you want a visa, if you want our assistance for a visa, you need a policy for um, that. And of course, Fabian has been working with me five years, and I think we I can count on the number of my hands the amount of times where we've had any issues. So guys, if you are going to look for an insurance broker in France, these guys are, are definitely the, the people to, to talk to. Well, perfect okay. overview there, Richard. Thank you for that. And nice yeah. segue to, to Fabien. Bienvenue. Come over, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Bienvenue à tout le monde. Yeah, well, what, what can I say after this introduction? <laughs> you covered it all. But yes, yes. We, well, obviously, I'm Fabian, you know, trying to be fabulous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the ego part speaking sorry so, so yeah i'm the uh, founder and managing director of uh, french insurance been operated since almost 10 years now 2015 uh helping out the english-speaking um expats or community uh in france or relocating to france or second homeowners uh ever since wasn't the original goal uh original core uh, audience but I've been an expat myself, uh, actually, before, up until 2014, um, a bit in the US, but mostly in the UK, uh, and actually as, as a French expat in uh, um, an English-speaking country, UK, US, I mean, admin stuff is so much easier. So um, I can definitely understand how confusing uh, this might have looked uh, going, you know, the other way around. So that's why I was thinking about targeting this, this market and this, this niche market very early on. And actually I stumbled upon Richard 
uh, pretty quickly, I think 2018, 2019, if I remember correct, correctly, and very quickly it was a match because we have the same vision. I mean, sure, everyone's here to make money, but at the end of the day, uh, what, what makes us thrive is that we, we're happy helping people move across whatever this is from the US, Canada, the UK. Well, obviously, you know, the further away from France, the hardest it, it seems. So that that's why we're, we're often mentioning U, US and, and, uh, and Canada or Australia for that matter, because we have a fair, fair bit of clients from there as well. But it, it's mostly, uh, it's an adventure rather than a rather than business. Because, I mean, that, that's something we say, Richard and I, when we are on an exhibition, for example, in the UK, everyone is kind of doing business and we are we are around in the exhibition laughing all day long because this is fun this is supposed to be fun you're supposed to be enjoying this is a new adventure a new life so it's supposed to be something pleasant obviously france is a very administrative country so we've created each of our businesses to help you guys move across and make it as simple as frenchly possible Beautifully put, Fabian, and absolutely true. These uh, you're helping people along on their adventures, so it can only be fun if you approach it with that mindset. Um, I suppose we should get into the the trenches now, um, guys. People have signed up for this because they want to move to France long term. And Richard, before we started this, you were telling me something about the three main tests that you would run when people turn to you and say, "Richard, I want to I want to move to France long term." Could you sure. just cover that? I think that'd be a good place to start. Yeah. Um, so Fabian and I uh, probably uh, had a battle over who came up with this first, but probably Fabian because he's been in the business longer. But I think um, the, the 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 policies uh, for French immigration, I think it's fair to say that if you're watching this video today, of course, they're going to be applicable, but things do change. And there, there are obviously new bills of immigration that are being voted as, as in the in progress as we speak. But really, for the for, for what we can take, which is over the last 35 years, I believe, for uh, US citizens, um, the pillars of emigration have always been the same for that kind of for those kind of countries, which are based on the fact that you have to prove that you've got income um, or uh, savings to suffice minimum income, which is to be precise, 1,389 euros. I think let's say 1,400 euros net uh, per month, and that can be held times 12 in a savers account of course more is better right um, but uh, yeah that can be that way it could also be through um, and this is the, the source of huge controversy I, I hopefully can answer some questions if you have them about remote working um, but remote working or pensions or any kind of passive income that suffices that 1,400 euros could also be considered so this is pillar number one income most of my clients tend to be selling or yeah, they've got they've they've sorted this side of things so i don't think this is the hugest worry for most of you guys um the 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 second one is health insurance and um that can obviously be covered with fab uh, insurance um and and i think again you you do a great job fab yeah uh, don't get me wrong but i think also your website makes it very easy to calculate what that would cost so guys you know you can just put your age literally and, and they'll they'll come up with a price and i think that's really super comfortable for a lot of my clients at least to be able to get that very rapid information um those moving from the uk there's things like s1 forms that are, are available but again maybe not always uh, applicable or advisable and um the third point is usually huge controversy comes along from this because fabian's always calling me and saying look are you sure mate are you absolutely sure that this is the case because i've got other people that are telling me that it shouldn't be this that it says on the website that you can have an airbnb booking or a hotel booking now that's the safe place to live so the third part the third pillar is this uh, safe place to live now i've I can assure you we've looked into this thoroughly. Um, if you are looking for a three month, a four month, a six month visa, or even a 12 month non-renewable, then effectively, yes, a, a hotel booking or something along those lines could suffice. If it is a permanent relocation that you're looking for um, with a renewability of that visa in France, it is indeed needed to have a safe place to live in the way that you define that in French law. 
for those that are landlords in France, you'll know if you've got a tenant, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> Even if you sell the house, you can't get them gone. Um, so the tenant has power. For those watching this across the world that you know that, that don't have these same rules as France, basically being a tenant in France is very protective. Um, it's very protective of the tenant, sorry, not necessarily the landlord. And that means that um, a 12 month long stay uh, visa is highly recommendable to have a 12 month or 36 month rental contract, the only two contracts that exist in France. If anybody else is trying to sell you something else, it's not uh, genuine. Or uh, obviously an attestation d'achat or a contrat de vente uh, définitif. So basically something from the, the, the notaire saying that you actually have completed on your property. So a lot of the clients uh, ben, that we will have are in those cases, they're either second homeowners and they've usually already had their property for quite a while. They might be from the US and looking to move to France and they want to have a visa before they actually commit to buying a house. Guess what? You're going to need a rental really if you want to be guaranteed on that. And it's not to say that some of them have passed through the loops. I know there's an awful lot of uh, sort of uh, equivalent services to, to us to a certain extent that propose you know, rentals and short-term rentals. Well, it's great if you've got those and they've been approved, but really if you dug into it, and I think that it is fair to say, Ben, that all of these three pillars are going to be more and more scrutinized whilst we get closer to these change and elections and all of these kind of things. So uh, notably, the big pillar that's being put forward right now is the income. So usually for you guys relocating, selling, all of your properties and things, you know, the income at first is not really the issue, um, but it is going to be something that is going to be more thoroughly looked upon because it's the kind of big um, bill, if you see, of, of reform that they're having on, on immigration in France. Uh, for those that weren't aware that there's, there's, there's an awful lot of talk about these changes affecting um, people's notably second homeowners. So, but in any case, if you're going to move to France permanently and you want to be able to enjoy France, without any restrictions of time, um, you need a long stay uh, visitor visa or a talent passport visa. Those are the only two that are renewable in France. Great overview, Richard. Actually, you sort of touched on a, a bigger point there because when we put this webinar out to say stay in France long term, yeah, people might think that okay, let's get, get the first year out of the way, but you kind of do need a game plan, right? If, if your position is vulnerable to the political changes that we've seen, you know, even over the last five years, it's, it's tense. So, I mean, what, what I think we should talk about this. What's the, uh, what's the process after that first year? Do you just renew that visa that you had the same address or you know, what, what's the story? Uh, yeah. So, so essentially, again, this is a process that I think my parents moved to France a year or two before I was born in 1986, 1987. Um, and so back then they had what is called the Cup de Sejour, uh, and that's just been put back in place for uh, you Brits watching us today. Uh, but of course, there was already in place for uh, US, Canadian, any other citizens. Um, so basically at the end of uh, the, uh, a 10 month period, after your visa has, has started, you will be able to book your renewal appointment, which can be held, of course, in France if you've got the right type of visa. Um, unfortunately, if you, there is also a 12-month non-renewable visa, so that there's yeah, there's a, there's an element where you've just got to be a little bit careful there. But essentially, if you have the right type of visa, then it's renewable to a cup de séjour, and those same pillars apply, but. This time around, you are going to be applying in your own prefecture and your own region. Um, and they are, I, I think it's, you know, I hear, and I, I sometimes also said that there is, you know, some discrepancy between how they deal with things. I don't think they do necessarily do that. They've got a rule book that they apply, but there are, there is a, a bit of a picture. This is a bank or mortgage application, and you want to be able to show to the French authorities that your story, your profile is the same as when it first applied, that there's yeah. stability, that you've got income, that you're now resourceful in France, that you've registered for taxes, for all these things and you're compliant and you're there. And, and I think that's what we do in our you know, packages that we sell to our clients, which is we take care of everything and a bit more than what is the minimum requirement because then you're just an A grade student, right? You're gonna arrive at your at your mortgage application, shall we call it, with more than you need and you look uh, good on that, on, on paper. Um, but also 
you know, you've shown that you've made an effort to integrate from an administrative perspective, at least at the moment, that's all they're asking for. Um, in the future, there are discussions of uh, language test levels, which at the moment are not required. So just for anybody watching at the moment, no need to. Yeah, all good, all day. Um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, those that, of course, learning the language is a really relevant um, part of your move to France is going to be you know, something that's uh, yeah. has got to be considered in integration, so, yeah. integration so in, in short that's the cut decision so in theory Ben to answer people's you know uh, technical requests potentially or to preempt those it's a 12 month long stay then they would renew your visa to a cut decision for 12 months and they do that three times before they would then renew that to a five-year cut decision and then okay. to a 10-year cut decision but they do have executive power to give you up to 10 years on any cut decision application. So if your file is fantastic, you've done everything to become French and you've got plenty of savings, then in theory, they might just say, look, we don't want to see you next year. Here's a five-year card. Here's a 10-year card. Here's a three-year card. So they have power and executive power to do that at the renewal stage, not, of course, at the initial visa point. And for those that have also missed the appointment, had to go back because business, because, you know, family's call, well, it's not the end of the world. It just means that you will have to renew your visa back in your country of origin and start mm. the whole process again. So it's a bit of a shame, but it is, of course, possible and doable. So there's, you know, again, I think there's an awful lot of fear mongering that's put in this world of legal aspects that there are solutions, but often they, well, truly they are only going back to your own country and starting again. So I yeah. think it's very important to understand the challenges, prepare for them well. And as Fabian will often say, you know, it's France, things go at the speed that they want to go. We're also like, I think probably any country experiencing huge technology shifts and the platforms of each government body it's fair to say, are evolving on a daily basis. And for those watching, you know, I'm sure you've sometimes you've traveled logging into your Zoom or to your Teams, what have you. It happens that technology fails as us. And I think also there's a time of change that makes the paperwork slower. Yeah, so that during that time, I'm sure this will all be sped up. And notably for visas, they're looking at doing, you know, remote uh, applications, with, to avoid having to go into visa centers and things like that. And it will be chaos and pandemonium to start off with if they did that. <laughs> and same for the healthcare cards. You know, some places it will take four months to other areas, nine months. So the good news is with us uh, and the same as with Fabian, all of our services and products are guaranteed. Um, we, we're so confident that we will find a solution that we guarantee all of your services, which I think is extremely important because a lot of people don't. I think no yeah for it. sure yeah people are uh, putting their trust in, in you to get over the line um yep. I think it's a, it's a great guarantee that I'm, I'm super interested in this idea of earning brownie points with your local administration office well, yeah you, I mean I got... guess it is it is just literally earning brownie points you know you, you yeah. your minimum uh your minimum requirements are the same in theory but the more you can show that you've done things that make it look like you are staying in france i mean uh, again i all of my services all of the services that we provide to a certain to a certain extent would all be free you could do them yourself that the people will use our services and i genuinely encourage you to do if you want to save time hassle and stress mm -hmm. um and 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 that's what we're kind of suggesting here is that the fact of the matter is is that we've worked very hard over the last five years to create a good solid and strong reliable platform um, and I think both Fabian and I, and you, Ben, because for those that don't know, Ben does also work in the industry, uh, but but slightly more financial. But that, but I think we genuinely care as, as individuals, as business owners, and as 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 also employees of our own companies. So um, uh, Fabian alluded to it at the beginning of, of, of this show. You know, we, we want to make it fun. Yeah, we do want to make it fun. That's why we like working in this industry as well, is that you're helping people. And I think, you know, the scientifically proven uh, is the endorphins that are released when you help people. Of course, you know, we are a business. We've got to make this um, work also financially because we employ lots of people. So the services aren't free our end, but they are the most inclusive possible. Um, or we try to make them better each time. But again, on that, Ben, the more we make it apparent, 
not just telling the French authorities that it's going, you are staying in France and you love France, etc. Yeah. Yeah. They want to see proof and the best proof for them, French paperwork. For sure. Uh, yeah. There, there is something that, that, that you, you're implying, Richard, in a way. I think it's important to, to point it out because the, the, well, all these rules and things in theory, you know, it's important to, to, to highlight that the visa is a very political tool. And at the end of the day, everything that we're discussing, they can decide from one day to the next that from, from now on, uh, they'll be more strict or they'll reject some applications pretty much without any reason. Like we've experienced, for example, back in 2021, when we had a, a political crisis with Australia because the Australian government withdrew a submarine order or something, I'm not political enough to remember this, but I do remember that it had an impact on visa applications uh, for basically a couple of months uh, with uh, Australian applications and a bit with the Brits as well, but maybe Brexit at the time didn't help either. But basically, I mean, it's important to, to highlight this because, I mean, that, that, that's what Richard is implying when he's saying, I mean, you, the rules, there, there are a theoretical set of rules, but in real life, you know, they have kind of a discretionary power as well. And it's also highly political. So you want to make your file look as good as possible because you never know. Sure, maybe you have a friend who did use an hotel or an Airbnb and it went perfectly fine. It doesn't mean your application following the same rules will. And that's why guys like Richard are really, really, I mean, even if you don't realize it, because he knows all the, you know, the, 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 the traps and, you know, the, 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 the uh, save you the headaches because you've seen it all, I mean, through the years. And I mean, sometimes you don't realize it because most people are focused on the visa application. That, that's usually the, the biggest fear is the visa because that's the gateway to France. But that's usually not what there is to see. You know, there is more behind this and shifting the focus to a more permanent, you know, global thing, like, you know, considering the location in one year's time and things like that. Because the sooner you, you you think about that, the better your file is. And actually, the less stressful the whole process will be. And this is something I'm not working for Richard, but I'm working with him. And I've never seen a, uh, an application being denied with him. And he's doing probably a thousand. I mean, I don't even know. He's probably doing a thousand a year. So that says a lot because I'm dealing with people that sometimes don't go with an older immigration expert or lawyer. And um, so some are competitors with Richard. And I'm seeing quite a fair bit of rejections though. Uh, so not saying I'm not playing the fear monger because most of you guys, if you're coming from an English speaking country, which I assume you are because we're all speaking English today, but uh, the rejection rate is way lower than he, from other countries, but still, you know, uh, it's not an automatic either. So, yeah. Well, I think it's, so it's coming from really, really good planning, right? So I suppose if I could challenge, challenge this or put you guys to test a little bit here. Um, if we're talking about good foundations when you're approaching a move to France, what, what, if we're saying people maybe are focusing too much on the visa and not about the, the bigger the bigger context, what what should people be focusing and and in which order? Because we all know the that cycle of trying to get a, a French bank account open, but you don't have an address and you don't have an address yet because you can't find a landlord that's willing to put you put you up. You know what what's the story? How how do you guys tackle that? I know it's secret sauce, but you know it's webinar. <laughs> it's probably for Richard. This hey. So I think first and foremost, it's it's fair to say that I did actually have one rejection on the thousand two hundred and fifty applications last year, which was in <laughs> Beijing, China. So I think you might grant me that one. Um, but but thank you, Fabian, for your kind words. Uh, but the the point being is that we're not here to to also just say how great each other's companies are. But we we are. Like, like, let's face it. But the point being is that I think it's, it's also bringing these these bits of info. The first thing that you could say to answer your question, Ben, is that in case it isn't clear, because we're talking about visas, but you actually can go for 90 days in France. Um, and But then you've got a 180 day rule before you can go and spend another 90 days. So we have a, a lovely, lovely calculator that we, we can share with you guys that's on our website. It allows to add all of your trips. And we I can share this in this chat a little bit later if you want. Guys. But um, in, in practice, 
Um, you could actually travel to France. I think France is very old school. That's usually why we like it and love it, right? And so you could go on your 90 days, visit some apartments, you know, uh, conclude a deal with a landlord. It's fair to say you're going to have to rent beforehand before you actually move there, which is, you know, financially, you're going to have to forecast for that. So that's worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, there are also some fantastic, um, we live in a lovely, comfortable world these days, right, guys? I think there are some great companies out there, uh, great estate agents um, that will allow you to video video view there's uh, some not even competitors to ours because these days as i said we're not even really handholders anymore but we do we offer for people that use our whole packages to help them um search for properties but that's not our main business that there, there are other businesses that do that very well but they often localized in just smaller areas so they won't offer more rural france they're just you know in paris nice um uh, potentially the, the, the locations that you know people know but maybe not best suited to them um but they offer options um and i think i would always focus on location we do also within our business we were just sick and fed up of having so many spending so much time searching so uh, i was actually in property beforehand so we've got about 10 13 properties that we can rent directly that we own and service and we provide those those to our clients if they want to but we are in southwestern rural france so i do warn you it's lovely but it is rural <laughs> um but but having said that i think that the one good way ben is definitely to come on a 90 day have a look uh, find somewhere uh find a few agents that are specialized in doing this but uh, depending on your location you know i know a lot of you guys coming from the us are focused on paris or bigger cities you know it's it's like any big city london's difficult to go and rent in new york's difficult yeah. to rent in la is difficult to rent in so um yeah I, I think but for the the search of property themselves i think the problem with france i know you know a, a lot of us are always linked to real estate or, or realtors and and the state agents in general if we're talking in in, in british english um the problem with France is that there are loads of options for your money. And I think my advice always is to find the region first, find the area. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, there was a video I watched on YouTube of, uh, of Lega Immobilier or something that came, that, that was really relevant. I think they were talking about, forget about the house, find the, the location. And I completely agree with that. I think the location is really really key go there in winter time where it's rainy when you're not drinking rosé where you know like go there you could be drinking rosé this is not exclusive and like, you could look be. at where you live fabio you know bayonne is such a or the the basque country is such a different place in the summer and in the winter arguably i prefer it in the winter but oh, you, we just have to drink beer inside the pub instead of outside but it doesn't change the mood <laughs> yeah but I, I so i think yeah but not i mean of course that do that you, you have you, you see where i'm coming from but i think especially in more rural zones um is that place going to be good for you in the winter for the for posters and i think it's really important because so many people get it wrong and also if you're moving with a family and with kids consider the schools because we all know how, you know, I, I think, you know, Fabian, uh, you've, got, you've got kids that are going to French schools, they're, they're French. And my kids are English predominant, going to French schools. It's difficult to start off with and that they're only one in three. And so, you know, imagine if they're 12 years old. I have so many friends and, and so many, um, you know, uh, uh, journalists that work with us and, 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 and often say that, you know, it's, you've, you're so lucky if this kids get the schooling thing. And I was fully educated in France. Fantastic schooling options, but it's not the easiest thing to do. So, and then just the social aspect, right? Make sure that the social aspect and the location and area is right. So I think we forget about, you know, Ben, sorry, I've gone off topic slightly, but I think it's people are focusing on the legal aspects. We can sort that out. Thousands of people get visas without our help. Um, thousands of people get visas with our help. 
Um, but what you're not going to be able to, what I can't fix is, is this the right place for you? Yeah. And, and also how expensive it's going to be, consider it, because like moving to Paris, um, I, I, and, and I'm not, please, all you Americans watching, don't, you know, uh, I'm not stereotyping it, but for you, a lot of it, is Par France is Paris. France is Paris or Nice, and when you start a topic, when you say, uh, I'm not being offensive, that's not really good, right? But yeah, but definitely, from that point of view, if you, if you, if you consider other areas, I, I, I speak with probably three or four Americans per day that are looking to relocate, and I think there are other areas than Paris, Nice, and Bordeaux. You know, there, there, there are lots of other options, um, and they can be financially an awful lot more attractive. And I think that's super important because, you know, that you're, you're going to end up not liking the decision that you make if you don't, if one, you know, we all have bad days and, and France has bad days and like has bad weather and has, you know, bad restaurants as well. And has, you know, the, the, I, I think if, if, if it, relocations are stressful enough, so make sure that your finances are right and you've got, you, you haven't overpaid for, for something that you could have found elsewhere. Great message to, to drum home, Richard. Perfect. And you're right. You, you said um, you said that it comes down to individual journeys. Um, and, you know, that's something to factor in on this. And actually, we're, we're interested on, on this webinar to get an idea on, on where people are or yeah, trying to, to go to or what they're trying to achieve specifically. So I'm going to bring up a poll now, guys. Um, hopefully that's all hitting your screens. Um, because this will help inform how we respond to questions at the end. So yeah, get, get involved. Uh, and there is uh, Ben, I've seen uh, the guys from our team, which we didn't introduce. I was a bit rude, by the way, we forgot about Jen and Marianne, which are working with Richard and I as well. And uh, they are working behind the scene to try to answer you guys. Uh, but also, <clears throat> so they, they were uh, mentioning that a, f a few of you are asking about the new legislation uh, about second homeowners uh, from the UK, uh, which may be granted automatic uh, visa, uh, like long-term visa, allowing you to be uh, to stay in France for six months a year, basically, uh, which is a bit different from the current six-month visa, which is a six-month in a row visa. So that visa would be kind of a six-month a year uh, visa. Um, so just not to get your hopes too pumped up. The, 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 the law was voted by the Senate, rejected by the French MPs, basically. And now they've, they've used the uh, uh, 49.3 yeah, um, Act, which, which allows them to force the bill. But uh, it's highly likely that the um, Conseil Constitutionnel, which is kind of the overseer of the legislation, will probably reject it again. We don't know. I mean, it might happen. So currently, um it has passed it, it is not enforced yet because they still need to get it live and create that new type of visa so that, that they're waiting for the conseil constitutionnel maybe richard you'll you want to comment on this as well maybe you have some some things you'd like to add um no i hate politics um <laughs> but um no actually i was going to say and this is not a plug um but David Yeats, uh, France Insider, uh, is a journalist, provides some really good content. Um, uh, it's, you, you can find them, of course, online. And they've just recently or are going to be publishing an article which my barrister, uh, Maître Anaïs Pinson of the Barreau de Toulouse, uh, has, uh, has helped publish for, for that specific topic. Um, as you mentioned, Fabien, I think at this stage, I mean, what I can, we can give is certitude is it will only be 180 days. So it would really only work for second homeowners. It would not be renewable in France. Um, remote working visa rules would be the same for any visa, whether it be 90 day or, you know, 12 months. So that, that's all good for you guys if it did go through. I just think there's too much it's controversy. Only from UK, just in, in the case, world. so it's kind of very specific. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that's that's the problem. I think France has has, has signed a, an economic contract with the US recently, and making US businesses easier to come to France, etc. And and in the, the the very PC world that we live in, I think there would be too much. Personally, I do believe there'd probably be too much discrimination between um, uh, countries. 
Um, and I think the bill of the Senate, the new immigration bill, if that's also a question, is mainly based on quotas of people that are entering the country without funds and without access to social care. But but that is, you know, for a lot of Americans, sadly, you know, at the moment, a lot of people are also thinking, well, we might retire in France because of the social system. So it is something that's worthwhile um, acknowledging. I can certainly say um, that we had a huge problem, as you know, Fabian, with the volume that we used to have on, on Cap Vital requests, um, because we provide that as a service. And we now have to package it with everything else, because we can't just service it on its own. There's so high demand on that, really, nearly. Um, and they have toughened that application so much. There's even a new division that's opened up for to prove um, income of uh, people coming from overseas. So this works for the guy that's in the UAE, that's a multimillionaire that wants to register his family there. That you know, that's really difficult for him to do that now. But it's also for somebody that's receiving social um, uh, pension uh, from the US, for instance. That I just had the case of that. Like you're going to have to pay something into the system here. It's not just quite what it used to be. And I think that's fair enough. But this new bill is really targeted well, mainly a, a on income. Person, we're and, asking. Uh, can you give us an idea, Richard, about the you know, for a US expat, because for, for British expats, this is different thanks to post-Brexit agreements, but for a US expat, what kind of price tag are, are we talking about for, for them to, to pay towards the French system? Oh, to enter the French uh, healthcare system. Well, for us, it's about just under a thousand euros per applicant, and it takes between anywhere between four to nine months to actually get into the system. And that's a one-off payment, of course. Then. When you do enter the system mandatory as a as a as a foreigner, so to speak, you have to have what we call a mutuel uh, top up, which will um, follow the, the the initial private medical cover that is required. And for you guys in the U.S., I know there's an awful lot of controversy about what because you often already have private medical cover in the U.S. Well, it's not the same type necessarily as the private medical cover that you need for the visa application process. So it's always worth contacting Fab Insurance, for instance, to just check that your Cigna or what have you policy is covering you for the visa application. Quite often it wouldn't, even though you're paying. And, it, and as Fabian will always say, you end up paying multiple times, you know, for uh, something that's frustrating, but it's just the way that things are. But yeah, uh, to answer the question, uh, timelines, you, you have to be 90 days in France to be able to apply for that healthcare. Um, then you've got to do that application, depending on your CPM, all of the new technology enforcements and change. And let's say it probably will take you a year to get your carte vitale. And then you have to pay for a small top up mutuelle, which is like the, the, the bridge between the 70% that the French government will give you and the full coverage. That's not mandatory for a French individual. It is to take that top up is mandatory for a foreigner. And just to be a bit specific, because the, the French system, actually the French system, even the French themselves, the natives, they will not understand how the system work. And I wouldn't have understood the system, it shouldn't and I worked in the industry uh, myself. So 70% um, is not 70% of the real expense you, you'll have to pay. It's 70% of an index that the state has voted in a way. Uh, and the index is kind of what you're expected to pay should you go public and you'll get refunded whatever you go public or private in France, kind of like uh, you may be used to in the UK with the NHS, kind of, you know, kind of. But um, but the, the 70%, what you have to keep in mind is that it's 70% of an index, okay? And that's why in France, you can see percentages where you're refunded 200%, 300%, you're like, well, what does that mean? So, because obviously some, some doctors uh, would charge much more than the index. The thing I like to, 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 to say about this, for example, um, there is a law since 2020, 100% Santé. Uh, if you have social security plus a mutual, you always have one quote that's for free. You will always have an option that's for free. Even for the glasses, even for a root canal, whatever, always a free option. But obviously, if you decide to go with the Gucci frame for your glasses, the state will not pay for that. 
So then you'll have an out-of-pocket expense, but you will get the same refund, whatever you go for the public index or the, you know, the, the 100% refunded version or the expensive or the fancy stuff. You know, So that's basically, but so don't get confused with that rule of 70%. It's not 70% of the expense or the real expense. It's 70% of an index. Big, big switch there, Fabian. Um, but yeah, very, really good to point out. Um, I just wanted to bring back some of the stuff on on the um, the poll that we did just uh, just before we move on to the medical stuff more more specifically, um, Fabian. But what do you guys make of that? I mean, you know, big chunk in here. Are we looking well over fifty percent of people two years out, you know, one year out? Um, when when do you guys believe people should start acting on on preparing for those three pillars that we mentioned at the top of this webinar? Uh, Richard might elaborate on this. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, insurance related, the, for example, when you're buying a property or renting out, insurance is mandatory. So it needs to be sourced before you get the keys or before you enter the apartment as a tenant. Um, for the visa application, you need to source the policy before, uh, well, actually the mandatory requirement is that you need to have the policy. Uh, it doesn't have to be live, but it needs to be set up. So scheduled for um, a start date at the visa application. Once you go into the in-person interview, so at the very latest, I would say one month ahead, I would advise at least 90 days ahead of the intended arrival date is a safe bet but you also need to source quite an awful lot of documentation to prepare your move, potentially prepare for a purchase and all. So Richard might elaborate on this and probably will push you towards a six month plus deadline. You're, you're laughing, Fabian, because I'm gonna say you need to sign up my first 12 months beforehand. These days, I think I have a record of like 24 months beforehand. I think what we, we've understood here is that these things are quite often not considered likely. So for most of my American clients, it's a progressional move. It might be first, they have a second home, they might rent first, they then buy a property, they then might spend more and more time in the country and eventually move. Um, I think there is clearly, without wanting to push people to, to do this quicker sooner rather than later, but I think there is a window of opportunity right now. Clearly, there's an awful lot of talk about this cut decision or toughening and language tests coming in. So if you have got the financial capacity and you do aspire to live in France, um, if, do it now because the quicker you get your visa, the quicker you get your cut decision. This is not me as a sales pitch. It's just genuinely, I've seen it beforehand. We've seen it with Brexit. People have held it off, have held off and then it's happened. And then of course it's then not too late, but it's just become more complex. So the sooner the better for that. I mean, I can issue a visa appointment, get your doc file ready within a month, sometimes within less time than that if required. But equally, we do have clients that literally sign up with our services a year beforehand. So the reason they would do that is because we can schedule monthly payments as well, free of charge, so they can actually make their fine. Again, preparing these finances when you're in the financial world, you know, if your exchange rates are good at that time and you want to, you know, you actually want to contract my services before you can totally do that. We've created an online platform which allows you to track all of your application and upload all of your do documents on your online portal. I think it's unique in the handholding service. We've got really invested the most amount of, of, of money in our own technology so that we can help people move on a longer term and, and way beforehand so they can organize themselves. So I would say really to be comfortable with what we do, probably even six months before, because there are also things like, as you would do for, um, applying for a mortgage, right? You would prepare your bank accounts for the next six months beforehand. You would clean your affairs up. You'd be selling your property. You'd be doing all these kind of good things. So genuinely, I, I think for, for me, uh, it could be on average probably six months before you move to contact us, but sometimes even before. Um, 
and you know for us we don't really have as similar to fabian we can you can win we can lock things in but for for my clients it's more about actually being able to budget forecast get that out of the way knowing that we've got that kind of in place and also collect their data apply for original birth certificates you know find i don't know change your driver's license state for the us for instance that could be because that the weird thing is certain states are not exchangeable in france certain of them are if you've got the opportunity to change you won't have to sit your test again um start learning french um there's it for 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 the US, I really thoroughly recommend the Alliance Francaise, um, and they have chapters all over uh, the country. And you can start doing courses with them um, beforehand. And uh, actually, um, our member of staff in the US is a tutor at the Alliance so, um, in Minnesota. But um, yeah, I, I think I would recommend, and you are going to be doing this a year beforehand. I mean, a few of you are just jumping on the jet, right? But uh, I have a few. I've, I've had a client that, uh, that called me a week before she was moving into her chateau um, and needed to get her visa. So we can do it really super fast. But I think, you know, uh, for most of you, this is a long process. So at least for us, at least six months beforehand is, is great. And we can we can then accompany you throughout. And don't forget for our journey, it's, it's uh, and as, you know, for Fabian services, yes, we're focused on the visa right now, but we'll provide you services like um, telephone translations, booking appointments, um, helping you with tax returns, things like that throughout your life in France, most probably. So, you know, we're not fussed about you signing up that far ahead just because we wouldn't sign up. It's just that genuinely it can be reassuring to have your ducks in a row, so to speak. Um, and we can, we can hold off for a few things. Our barrister can check through your documents beforehand. So, yeah, if you want to sign up a year before, Fabian will laugh, but for me, it's all good. No, no, actually, uh, uh, I don't laugh because it's it's um, it's just that for me, obviously, that there is not much I can sell. I cannot sell something that early, but it definitely makes sense. And also to have, have up on a bit of hope because, well, Richard, Richard is correct. He is the planning guy. And, and, and the sooner you get things started, the better... Uh, and exactly like you've said, you know, um, well, the UK is the brightest example of this when, when no one was expecting Brexit and then it created a bit of a mess for people who wanted to relocate. So don't wait for something catastrophic to happen. If you do want to move across, then try to make it real as quickly as possible. However, uh, to kind of uh, light the mood up a bit, uh, you know, uh, people have mentioned the, the French language test. And this is something I like to say. I have American clients, which are big because... For example, Brits, uh, they didn't have to uh, have a residency permit before. So, uh, but American clients, which have been on residency permits for thirty years, and they don't speak a single word of French, or like perhaps something like order a drink they could do, like or a cafe s'il vous plaît, things like maybe something like that, but they're very basic. Uh, and sure, they're changing the legislation, and so again, this is all a bit unclear for now. But uh, as far as I've understood the, the, the law that has been passed uh, recently, uh, everything that they are concerned, cons well, considering doing is in regard to these multi-year residency permits. So the visa application, the one-year residency permit, for now they're unaffected, which means you can still come to France, live in France kind of permanently uh, without speaking French. I would definitely advise you to speak a bit of French just to avoid being frauded when, when you buy some stuff or with builders or whatever. But this is also important that this could be a learning curve. And even the requirement, the language test that they've created right now, this is really a very basic level of French they're asking for. So, so first, uh, important to remember that uh, it's only for the multi-use permit for now. And it's only something they're considering on doing. It's not certain that this will pass for sure after the Conseil Constitutionnel. So uh, still the possibility that this, this could be rejected uh, or part of this. And even if it is, this is a very basic level of French and for multi-use permit. This is really important to keep that in mind because I know this is kind of a pull off for some, for some of you guys. And this definitely usually is a learning curve. You don't have to speak French at least for the first couple of years. So leaves you plenty of time to um, acclimate yourself into the French culture. And also remember uh, that from their perspective, from our perspective, you look exotic. 
So everyone will want to talk with you because you're foreign. And usually the French uh, will, will love foreign guys. So. Yeah, absolutely true. If you put yourself out there, they're normally very welcome to uh, well provide support and yeah, help you into the community. Um, that is for sure. Actually, if I just realised the the time, and we've got all this way, and I'm yet to put you very much under the microscope yet about your core expertise. So, I'd like to address that if I may, on the medical um, insurance front. Um, let's say people are very much now in the the bang on the timeline, they should be starting to look into these things. What are the key tips to make sure people get it right? Okay, so um, first, just in case, you, I've seen you, you've asked a lot of questions, guys, don't worry. Um, Jen and Marin probably are answering you, but we every unanswered question will manually review and answer, you know, after the, the webinar, uh, we want to make sure everyone uh, is, is being answered. Uh, I've also copy pasted, links to book consultation with Richard and I, you know, should you have any other questions, one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations. Um, but yeah, uh, back to the uh, sexiest stuff ever, which is uh, insurance. Indeed, you're right, Ben. Um, yeah, so Richard was pointing it out. I don't remember if it was the second or third pillar, uh, but yeah, insurance, uh, so it's not really insurance. They want to make sure you have medical coverage. Uh, when in France, that you do not have a medical coverage gap. So that means, for example, it's actually a generic situation. If you are European or if you have access to a European medical card, like, you know, from social security, from, I don't know, Germany, whatever, uh, then this will work as an exemption. Uh, the GEIC, for example, from the UK doesn't work because it's not valid for residency. You need something that could be valid all through the course of one year, something permanent. So um, most of the time for non-Europeans, that means you need to source private medical insurance for the first year. That requirement remains valid for residency applications. Many people forget about that from year two because they're like, oh yeah, we're part of the French social security, but Richard touched space with that and saying, well, you need to top it up. And this is not an optional thing. It's a mandatory requirement. And just just to be clear, um, you are not the only ones in France which, which do have the mandatory requirement. Marianne and I, we are employees of the company. And as employees, this is also mandatory for employees to have a mutual. So there are categories of people in France which do have to have a top of health insurance. Uh, so that include you guys. So you will need private medical insurance as long as you're not part of the French system, and once you're part of the French system, you need to top it up, like mandatory. As Richard was saying as well, private medical insurance, you can find all across the board, all, you know, all across the planet, you'll find uh, insurers willing to insure you. The, the, the requirements for that are very specific. However, depending on where you're applying from, US, Canada, UK, they can be more or less picky and apply the rules more or less by the book. Uh, so, well, I can bombard you with the theoretical requirements. You know, no, I, the policy shouldn't have any kind of excess deductible, nothing like that. It should be a comprehensive plan in and outpatient benefits. You should have a repatriation policy included, plenty of stuff like that. But basically, my advice would always be go with an insurance company that knows the drill, that has like a track record history. Obviously, I'll tell you, we're the best, work with us. But um, whoever you're going with, make sure that they, they've processed hundreds, if not thousands of these applications, French applications, you know, it's French specific. Make sure they have a, like a money back guarantee like we do offer. That means they're comfortable selling you that policy. Uh, and, and But really make sure they've done it plenty of times because even if they have a money back guarantee, if your policy, if the, the visa application is denied because of the policy, and I'm seeing that very often people turning to us because their policy has been denied, they're now in a rush. They've been into an, an interview, it's been rejected, and they have to provide another uh, insurance policy very quickly. Sometimes they may have to pay two policies because the, the former insurer will not refund them. And, and sometimes they have to book another appointment. So it's a waste of time. You may miss the spot you, you intended to have. You may have lost money. So that's what I'm saying. Not to be the fear monger, but just, just make sure you're working with guys that know the drill. Obviously, again, 
I'll tell you with the best, but even if you work at the competition, just make sure you're working with people that have done that, not just a couple of times, like hundreds of times, literally, like if not thousands of times. So yeah, all that being said, uh, I've said basically what it makes a policy compliance, no excess, no deductible, comprehensive policy, uh, 30,000 euros cover. But again, it's a typical example of some things that's typically French. The textbook requirement is 30,000 euros. You should have a cover, 30,000 euros. No medical exclusions. But for example, if, the med if you have medical exclusions on your policy, but it's not written on the certificate of insurance, they'll be happy with it. Or if you apply at the London or the New York center in the US or uh, London in the UK, they expect to see 100,000. God knows why. There's no reasons. It's just maybe that the finger posture there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but this is so this is why working with people who knows about it, you know, they've, they've seen the process hundreds of times because you make going like, yeah, I know I meet all the requirements. And all of a sudden, what will you do if you end up um, at, at the appointment and they tell you, no, I'm not happy with that? Even if you are in your rights to say, well, I'm meeting the requirements, what will you do? So don't, you know, uh, don't gamble with that. Work with people that has been, again, Work with us, it's guaranteed. But work with other people if you'd like. Just make sure you, you're sticking with guys that have done that has done it and have done yeah. it and has a track record uh, of doing it. I think uh, yeah, I think Richard said it at the top as well. Super important to use battle tested solutions. Um, exactly. There are out there. Just need and to Richard be asking. Is, actually, there is something Richard's saying quite often, uh, and the more I think about it, the more I, I think it's correct. Is that uh, working with people who are actually French. Uh, it makes an awful lot of a difference because, mm. well, obviously it looks a bit pedantic, from, but, but I mean, you know, the French are very particular, especially the administration. There is sometimes a massive, like a moat between mm. the theoretical requirements and the way you should be dressing the bride in a way, you know, uh, and working with guys who understand the culture. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Richard. You know, I, I was going to butt in there because I haven't mentioned that. And it, it's always, you know, I think for those guys watching this today, um, what I can share, and I think while we've been successful, yes, I care. And we've built, you know, I work for big companies, so I stole the good ideas of how to look after them. And I always worked in luxury brands beforehand. And I think that helped me. But I think genuinely what, what, what why this and Fabian and I, you know, work well together. Why Ben, you know, you, you, you bring an edge to the clients that you deal with is because having grown up with two cultures and understanding the, the true intricacy of um, the differences between the English speaking language uh, worldwide. Um, and I mean, I, for, for me, being an English person, when I went to America and lived there and worked for Americans, I couldn't believe how open you guys are. Like, you'll walk up and you'll say, nice shirt. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's weird. You're talking to me? I don't know you. Um, so I think, you know, we've all, even in the English language, we've got an awful lot of cultural differences. But in France, it's really notable. I mean, Fabien and I, uh, born, grew, grew up in the southwest of France. It, anything north of Bordeaux for us is is actually probably not even half part of France, right? Um, we, we cope with Bordeaux because the wine's okay. Um, but, but, but that, you know, that's a huge thing. And within Anything business, it's, that's, not you know, that's, it's, it's not a massive device. But my point being is that I think also my best way to describe this, okay, if you have French people in a bar, they will actually argue the hell out of it. You think they're having a full argument and then seconds later they're sat down and they're drinking together. In England or in the US, if you have that kind of argument, you're not talking to anyone again. That's it. That's finished. And I think in French admin, it's exactly the same. And I think for me, my theory and the theory that for me, business language, the business language of the world is English. And this is a theory. And so don't hate me for this. But um, I think it's not because it's the easiest to learn. I think it's because the, the English language is one of the only languages in the world that doesn't have a third person of plural. So uh, you, you straight away, you address somebody as Ben, as Fabian, that the proximity in business, I've felt it immensely. I was trained in sales and marketing in France, and it's very difficult to sell in France because you're talking in the third person of plural. 
that also happen to speak Spanish as you do, Fabia. And we have the same thing in Spanish, right? Usted, it's maybe not quite, it's actually okay for um, in, in Spanish to have a difference, but in France, it's very formal. And you can fall out in the third person of plural. It doesn't matter. You can then have a drink together, but you can't really in, in the English language. So I think the approach to business, and certainly I was recruited by American firms to be like a double agent, to be able to work with the French, but also be able to work on the English level. And that's all we bring. We bring the English level, the British American level of service that I understood and like working with, which is very rewarding when you get it right, but also incredibly difficult to get right, but that's the challenge. But the French side of the thing, the culture is required. I can't recruit people with an accent in a way, and this sounds awful, to do the jobs of certain people in my team that have to be French, because they're gonna to have to fall out with the CPAM which is the Caisse Primaire d'Assurance Maladie, for those asking. It is the central hub of healthcare for France, right? Well, you're going to have to fall out with them very politely. It doesn't mean you wouldn't go out for a drink with them later, which is really weird in our English culture, right? But I think that's the subtle nuance that you're trying to bring there, Fabian, is, is you could have lived for 30 years in France. Unless you've born there live through that culture, experience the social change between those two, they're nearly two bodies. And that's why we love, you know, that's why people are in love with France. I never cease to be amazed at you Americans that watch French movies, that learn French, that, you know, maybe ever been to France, but feel this emotional connection with the land. I think that emotional connection, you, you feel it with the language not so much the the actual the country itself and so i was surprised I, i'm actually sat in our office in the uk at the moment and i went to a local pub in kent and there was a, a, a gentleman approached me and he said uh, oh you, you you lived in france or you live in france and he's like yeah yeah and and oh my wife she's she's learning french she doesn't she's never planned to go for, to france but she's learned fluent french and i'm always amazed by this connection and i think that's what brings the difference between even those applications. The reason Fabio and I can actually work our way around these applications is because we understand the logic that is the French one. And we understand where, you know, the rule book can take you and other things. And um, I, I, I think that's the key thing. And I think that's what, you know, Ben was alluding to initially is that what are the key tips? Well, the key tips that you're probably not going to get that cultural thing straight away. It's, it's probably not going to happen for years and it might not ever happen. It doesn't have to, by the way. You can live perfectly ever after in your sort of uh, uh, part of France that you choose to create your own island, so to speak. But if you want to immerse yourself and you want to save yourself time, you need somebody that can actually guide you through that, that understands that, that difference. And for me, it's been a huge challenge in business to recruit people that could work on the American standard, which is for me the standard of work around the world. I think that's, that's very clear. It's the, it's the way that I, I would like to be able to run the business moving forward, that attention to detail, that openness of communication with clients, that constant kind of feedback loop that never ends, um, which we don't quite have in the UK, but we're working our way to. But certainly then having that ability to interact with the French authorities. I mean, Fabian's team, I think Fabian's done a great job of creating a, a, a successful business. But the main thing is he has a, a, thank you, Marianne, for the shout out. Yeah, I'll ask for a raise for you soon. Um, but, uh, but the point is you've created a great team, right? A great team that understand the French process that now have started to understand. And I say start, because you start to understand after a certain time, how the English language expectancy of service works and the reassurance you know the poll that you're going through ben and you're saying look the highest level of stress is what the visa i know that so so for me the, the visa process is as stressful as for you nearly and it is for me because you don't really know the outcome until you get your passport back by the way and i think we haven't really covered that topic but shall we just jump into that because it's one of the highest wins you, the, the visa application process varies all over the world to a certain point. So this morning I was preparing clients in New Zealand that will be going straight to the French consulate. So um, they were, uh, obviously they're gonna be dealing with French consulate indirectly because that in a way New Zealand's a small country 
and it's going to be a direct hit, if you like, with the uh, French authorities. In countries like the US, Canada, um, you will be dealing with a company called VFS, and they will be uh, the intermediaries, if you like, between you and the French government. Um, so those appointments are held around the country. You can choose wherever you want to go. In our case, we book all of this and prepare you for all of this. But this is what it looks like, right? You go to that appointment, you meet somebody that may have never gone to France before, that's going to check essentially that you are who you say you are, that you filled in your forms correctly, and going to send all of that good stuff to DC, if you're in the US, of course, for the consulate to approve your visa. And if you're in the UK, same thing, you're going to be dealing with a company called TLS, which managed this for many other countries, by the way. So you're going to be maybe sat in an office in Wandsworth with 150 Japanese students applying for a visa uh, for Japan. But, but you, the, the point being is that it, it's kind of the, the, the process is very, but, but in context, you are going to have to go somewhere, present yourself, put that form in, and you're not going to know until the visas come back, either posted or actually you've gone to collect it, which we recommend that you can, you're not going to actually find that out until you open up your passport and see what's in there. So it's literally poker face to the very, very end. And then you're going to have to go to France within three months to validate your visa. So that will have to, that's what we call visa validation, where you're going to be introduced to the French tax system, where you're going to pay for your visa validation, the first amount of tax in France. So you're actually going to have to pay a fee directly to the government. To, to go, to the, then you've got your 10 month wait, then you'll cut the séjour, and then you do the same again. So in France this time. But so, so there is a, a, a key structure and process to that. And I think that the, the, what Fabian was trying to say indirectly, I, 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 I agree with you, is that you make sure that you've got a company, if not if they're not French, that they've got actually French people working in there um, to do these things because they're just difficult to run, to, to work their way around culturally otherwise. You know, I think that there's, that, that, that's, that, that's, I think, what Fabian's saying. And I think we probably didn't notice that for quite a while, right, Fabian? We, we, we were, I think, the first going to these marketplaces and, and going to these existing shows and activities and, and, and webinars. Kind of, and um, we realized that we were the only French companies there. Right? Ben, you've been in it for longer than us in a way. So we're like the only French companies in the French move into France market, which is kind of weird, right? All French people, to, because I, I consider myself French. Uh, je peux parler français du coup, si vous voulez. Uh, <laughs> and, and I actually sound like I'm from the southwest of France. But um, yeah, I, I, it, it's just a weird thing, but I think that's really key. I think that's what you're pointing upon. And, 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 and we noticed it the other day. We were actually talking about you, Ben. We were having a, a drink in Bayonne. And, uh, I know that you'd been there with Fabian not long beforehand. Mm. Uh, and, and that is, you know, my, my, my other half said, Christ, I, I, this is, feels really foreign to me. And I was like, this is, this is home for me. You know, like this is really, and so it's such a, it's a deep thing, right? And I think it is, you, you, you've got, I think, to follow Fabian's uh, word and advice there, if you're going to use people, make sure that they actually are people that understand France really truly and it's not me just saying that because i think i do i know i do because you know that's how i was brought up that's how uh, you, that's how we've been uniquely successful it, that's the, if we pan it down to that and a lot of hard work and commitment but that really it's because it comes from a true place and i think for all of you watching today i think that's the, the key thing and with france it, it it is if you're moving to france i think for a majority of people there's two elements that bring you to France, the love of the country and the, the cheap wine. No, I, not the cheap, <laughs> the, the love of the country and, and the cheap real estate, we, the, the value for money. Like all of these guys living in the Western world, we all know it, you know, you're living in New York, you're, you've got a great job, a fantastic career, but you're living in a small apartment that's worth loads of money in France compared to chateaus, et cetera. And one other word of advice I would give whilst we're giving, and well, I haven't been asked, but I will give it anyway. <laughs> I think I've already started. Is that also don't be carried away by the size of the property because an awful lot of people are moving. You know, unfortunately, I think this is a truth. They're moving because it's a better life. It is a, and it is a better life, guys. You, you will get better quality food in supermarkets. You will get less, less, people in schools for your kids 
you will get cheaper health care you will get a very safe country in part because we all have our problems you know paris and its outskirts are not the best places to live you know that's the reality um france is not this massive wonderland um but within it there are some pockets of absolute gold and i think when you are moving just on the property alone be careful of that because i i, I think that's you know um what I was alluding to earlier is that you, you know you've got to make sure that the area is also right for you that you feel that rooted connection because otherwise I think you'll end up a little bit um, you, you, you're only going to love your big house and your three hour lawnmower ride so much <laughs> it's you know but it's true though it is a it's a first world problem right but when you move to a big house and you realize that you got to spend three or four hours cutting your grass it's okay if you're retired um, but, but a lot of uh, Americans, I think that my clients like to move to, and I think this is a really cool thing, by the way. So thank you, America. Um, uh, and God bless you guys. Um, but um, you, you, the, the point being is that it is really cool that I think from a majority of my American clients, you look to move to cities or to towns to have that walk down in the morning, have a cafe, a baguette, et cetera. And it's quite a shame in a lot of the rural areas and notably where I grew up in Mironde in the southwest of France, where the French are, don't, are moving out of the centers. The British usually buy big country houses and renovate chateaus, and that's great. And the French love us Brits, by the way, for renovating all of these old houses that we wouldn't otherwise live in. Um, but the, the, the Americans tend to come in and move into smaller cities, hamlets, and, and renovate townhouses and really have that French experience. Um, and I what think also there's going just on planning there, in it. Why? And so if you're moving from America, you're going to be planning this for longer. Yeah, and so you're going to be learning there language, too, exactly. for sure. Well, why do you think that is? Why, why are Brits going for big anyway, places with lots of land and, and all that stuff versus Americans going into towns? What, what's driving that? Oh, I think um, I think genuinely speaking, uh, the, the the American uh, people that are moving are, are in love with France. This is a long planned journey to France, mm -hmm. sometimes 20, 30 years in the making. Right. Um, and I, I think it's a transitional move as well. It's very easy to get in the car and drive to France from the UK from America. I think it's sure. more OK, we'll take it one step at a time because the, I, I, I've lived in America. And I felt very far away from home, if I'm honest. I, I loved it, but I did feel very far away from home. So I think there is the fact that in a town, you get all of the benefits. I love being in the UK when I can walk to the local store, like a, a, the pubs, the things that's, you know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a luxury for me. So I think it's the same luxury for somebody that's from America to be able to walk down, get fresh bread, go to their little thing, have their cafe, have their brasserie meal. Um, and that's what's great about so many rural parts of France that you might have not considered. You get all of your Paris stuff in somewhere that's like 70% cheaper, if not 80% cheaper. Yeah. And really what you're looking for is, is probably there. And I'm creating these little communities for Americans and where I grew up in, <laughs> me wrong, uh, in the Southwest. So yeah, I'm working my way to do it, but the, I, I think in general, that's kind of the drive. And I think there are an awful lot of um, families as well, younger families now, thanks to remote working, moving mm -hmm. to France. And so a lot of those are from the UK. I see a few questions coming up from remote working and owning UK companies. Uh, I can answer from a position I do. I own the UK business and the French one. Um, French regulations are pretty clear as long as you're, you're um, working uh, remotely um, from your laptop. But there are regulations in the UK of how much time you need to spend in the UK to be a director of a limited company. So, you know, you need to get in touch with people like, myself and Fabian in those contexts because um you know we do it we're doing it real life you know we've got I've got an LLC uh, in the US so I, I I've had to learn all of these things sort of firsthand so I'm although I do have a lawyer and a barrister in my team um I, I've I've also got an awful lot of 
life experience with that. And so is Fabian, of course, because we're both running businesses that are growing and dealing with international people every day. So this morning I was with somebody applying in New Zealand. This afternoon I had two appointments in the US. Then I had an appointment in Montenegro um, and finishing off with somebody in London, which I haven't forgotten about. I will be sending you a quote through. Um, um, but um, th th that's the, the scope of what we do these days. So I think it is, and I'm so happy to be able to bring that back to France. Um, because you know France has given me so much in that context and 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 that ability to be able to to give back and to help people you know make their lives in a way better because it is that it's such a transition you see you know what is considered successful in the u k and U the u s is essentially a monetary sum and a one hour journey and i'm i well, we're based in Kent for obvious reasons at the moment. And some people here don't even see their kids during daylight because they're commuting to, to London for an hour and then they're commuting back and they're earning plenty of money, I guess. But, you know, if you could do that from your office, home office in France, wouldn't that be lovely? So, Huge yeah, I think, shifter. amen. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're right. Vive so la France. Right. Vive la République. <laughs> Beautifully put, Richard. I've just seen the time. I suppose this would mark a, a good time to uh, stop there. But hopefully everyone really enjoyed the information shared. We've had so many questions through and actually um, plenty of topics that we haven't hit directly. Rest assured, guys, you'll be get oh. One last thing, Ben. Sorry, one last drum because I've seen loads of questions come in. I'll answer it bank accounts for americans we work with bnp paribas you can just go straight through onto our website through our client portal create a login open the bank account it will be even able you'll even be able to do it from the us and they will be able to send your debit card to your us address before you move to france uh, and, ju and just to, to kind of top up that comment uh, we, we will send like a mail shot after the event to all of you guys that has registered and attended the, the, the webinar or actually missed the webinar so that we will send the, the links for booking consultations with Richard and myself, if you like. Uh, also, we'll publish the replay on our YouTube channel. I've sent the link in here. And again, we'll try to answer everyone's questions individually. It may take a while because I've seen quite a few questions. But if you've left uh, your email when you registered, uh, we'll get back in touch and try to answer the questions in time. Sorry, sorry, guys. I mean, uh, this was a bigger success than expected. Thank you for that. Uh, but so we, but make sure we will answer each of your questions. And sorry for those who we could not address live, uh, but we will definitely be answering you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I would not say vive Napoleon because Richard is calling me Napoleon all the time, but that goes to vive la France then. <laughs> Are we good, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for Sorry, everyone. so yeah, I, I think and Ben, if you if you cut up say no, I was just gonna say saying things to everyone. Thank you, Fabian, for organizing this. Thank you to all of the people that Fabian you've reached out to to get uh, people onto the webinars today. I mean it's been r really cool. It's the you know the, the second edition for you guys. So so congratulations. Thank you, Ben, for being such a great uh, host as usual, mate. Uh, well done, even with Hi. less hair than usual. <laughs> done a really good job. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And th th thanks, Ben, for this, because Ben is actually... And, and, and I think, right hey, now, so... Fabian, without plugging it, if people want to, if people want to meet us in real life, um, and you are from the UK, don't forget that we've got two shows coming up in the UK, um, French Property News, uh, which um, is in London, and we've got a place in the Sun, Ascot. Um, actually, can you... Give the dates, Fabian, because I'm terrible with them. They're this weekend, the 28th, I on think. On top of my head. I think um, it's, this weekend, uh, the next weekend is, yeah, is, is third, London. And we can share those as well February. if you want to come and meet us. Yeah, 3rd yeah. and 4th of February. Yeah. And the week before. Yeah. And then the, the weekend, 7th, the 28th. 28th. Yeah. 
Super. We're going to try to do another one. I'm plugging my own webinar. We've got one planned on the 8th. So anyone that didn't uh, didn't get the full session, you can join again with us. We're going to be talking. You'll have my barrister and one of my legal uh, uh, aides uh, there because they're the people that work behind the scenes for me and they're fantastic, a bit like Fabian's team. So um, I want to get them live and you can ask them questions as well. Ben, you're welcome to come over with a bit more hair next time. <laughs> I have to buy some of that special spray. Spray back quicker. Um, yeah, awesome. great stuff, guys. Great webinar. Well done. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks. Merci à tous. Bonsoir. Bonsoir à vous. Bye.